Aspiring musical artist Marvin Bagley III turned 20 this week, and while his music is promising, he can always fall back on basketball. Bagley's listed at 6'11", but moves with a fluidity that's rarely seen in a player of his size. He's already a certifiable scoring machine, armed with a jumper and all kinds of spins and hooks that big men only dream of. He owns a classic face-up game, and from the triple threat he can use his dribble and footwork to dance into a score, or even set up a little fadeaway. He's got wonderful touch in the lane, especially with these little hook shots, and his quick elevation and agility help him release these cleanly against most defenders. He'll claim position too. Notice this seal into Draymond Green, and then the skyscraper release over the top for two. He's already dangerous in transition, using that speed to outrace bigs down the court, and his athleticism to finish at the rim, or snatch lob passes for easy dunks. Here he pokes the ball away, then jets from the baseline to a dunk in four and a half seconds. He does have an outside shot, pulling from either corner or above the break, but it's unclear how accurate he is with such a small sample. He's only attempted 64 threes this year, making just 27% of them, but he looks comfortable shooting it, and if we included his college shooting from last year, he's taken 126 shots outside of 21 feet and hit them at 33%. It's not the strongest sample, but it hints at mid-level shooting from long range. He is at 66% from the line over the last two years, so it is unlikely that he'll ever be a really good outside shooter. He does get to the line a lot, pressuring opponents with that face-up game, and he'll even initiate contact at times. He's already in the 91st percentile in free throw attempts per possession, and he takes a free throw for every two and a half field goal attempts, a rate that sits in the top quartile among rookies with the same scoring frequency or better since the inception of the shot clock. And 26 of those 30 rookies with Bagley's scoring volume and free throw rate became all-stars, and many of them ended up in Springfield in the NBA Hall of Fame. Marvin's glaring weakness right now is his passing game. His vision is limited and here he misses a free cutter, but his issues really pop in transition where tunnel vision offsets those physical gifts. His head is down here and he misses an easy layup. He's often out of control on the break and his decision making is subpar. He needs to give up the ball earlier and if he could ever run a fast break with the basketball, it would just be icing on the cake. He does make basic passes in the half court. Here he hits that cutter, but notice he makes it after his scoring move fizzled out. He struggles to maintain vision while making a move and his solid passes come when his attacks are blunted. This play highlights his poor vision to me. He doesn't seem to realize there's no one there to cover Giles. Bagley's probably thinking score, but when he kills his dribble, he misses another high percentage entry and instead floats it aimlessly to the other side of the court. Bagley counteracts a lot of this subpar playmaking with monster offensive rebounding. He can sky for the ball and he's incredibly quick off the floor with his first and second jumps. He also has the swim move of a great pass rusher, using his man's box out leverage against him to teleport around him for inside position. If we compare Bagley's scoring and rebounding combination to young rookies over the years, only a few have topped his scoring rate of 19 points per 75 possessions, while grabbing at least 14% of the available rebounds. 85% of these players were all-stars, which is another strong sign for Bagley going forward, even if he falls toward the lower end of this group defensively. Marvin had a shaky defensive reputation at Duke, but he's not a lost cause on that end. That quick bounce and length give him some shot blocking ability. He's extremely quick off the ground, and all of that athleticism helps him be disruptive at times. His length not only helps him on the glass, but gives him the potential to clog passing lanes and switch onto perimeter players and bother them with long contests. The emphasis here though is on potential, as he's currently a bag of mediocrity when it comes to defensive awareness. In fairness, he rarely has blatant breakdowns like this one here, where he doesn't recognize this as a pick and roll threat. 
Instead, most of Bagley's defensive struggles are more subtle. Take this play, where he's a touch late reacting to this roll threat by sticking to Andre Iguodala of all Warriors, and instead of a vertical challenge, Bagley has a habit of sort of flying past the hoop. Or here, where he lingers in the lane for an extra beat after Gay picks up his dribble, and this leads to some skateboarder closeout on Bertans and cracks Sacramento's defense open. Here's a lack of strategic awareness, where he waits at the foul stripe for his man instead of identifying that a streaking Jalen Brown might be a problem for the smaller De'Aaron Fox. Bagley's quite vulnerable to up fakes, and his desire to leap at the sign of a shot hurts his man defense, and he hangs for so long when he commits to the block that it takes him out of the play. He's so athletic that this occasionally works, but it's not ideal to treat paint defense like some jump ball contest. It's an easy approach to exploit. Here, one extra step leaves Bagley grasping at air after he was winding up for his jump. Marvin's footwork has issues as well. He takes giant strides. That's about a seven foot step there. And this can cross his feet up badly. Again, notice the long strides instead of quicker, smaller steps. Bagley is agile and has nimble hips, so he has some recovery on these kinds of plays, and he does a great job making this into a tough look for Ben Simmons. His physical tools might make him switchable in the future, but he has a lot to iron out when it comes to these technical weaknesses. Some reps will likely clean up the sloppy rookie mistakes, but his defensive awareness is a real question mark moving forward. He can learn to stay down on these up fakes, but I'm doubtful that he can ever really be a good team defender, given some of his blind spots. Coordinating ball and man isn't easily learned. Bagley's subpar defense not only drags down his impact metrics, but raises questions about his ceiling. Big men who struggle defensively are hard to build around, and while I'm optimistic he can evolve into a solid defender, it does give him a wide range of plausible outcomes. His game has an old school quality to it, great isolation scoring and offensive rebounding, but he's an unknown as a floor spacer. His passing should develop a bit in time, and the historical company he has kept as a teenager is extremely encouraging. But the game is different today, which only clouds the picture even more. So while I can see him never making an all-star game, I can also see a competent defender down the road who is a scoring machine and maybe, just maybe, adds value as a stretch big, and a player like that would have all NBA impact. If you're interested more on rookie growth, the latest Thinking Basketball podcast episode number 13 is about star players surpassing their ceiling or even blowing right through it. There's a link in the description box below. Also, many of you have asked about a video breaking down popular stats and analytics tools, and I'll definitely have content coming up on that shortly. Special thanks, as always, to my Patreon supporters who allow me to do this. And otherwise, I hope you guys are having a great day.